So this is a video to show the Studio Time Tracker application developed by Codify Care, an Italian or an Irish developer living in Italy. This application is another of the applications in support of the SGL Open Exchange developer competition for applications that have been written that make use of the integration API in Studio 2014. So I moved down to Studio and you'll see that on my views down here I now have an additional view this time called the Studio Time Tracker. And if I click on this view, you can see it brings me up something completely new. I have a new ribbon with lots of new information across here. I have a navigation window on the side here. If I move this down so it's a bit bigger. And in my navigation window, I can see I've got different clients. So I have two clients that I've set up, one called Cheapskate, one called Happy Days, um, and then various files that I've been working on for translation, review, or sign-off and the amount of time that I've spent on these activities has been recorded and stored against this work automatically as I've been working. And on the side here I have another window which is my activity tracker. So when you first start work in Studio it'll be like this and you won't have the activity tracking turned on. And if that's not turned on it's not recording anything. But as soon as you turn that on, from now on every piece of work you do in Studio will be recorded. But before I show you that, just let me take a quick look at the settings. So in the settings here, it's possible to create um, different activity types. The defaults are translation, review, and sign-off. And I've added one for post-edit. You can apply a, um, a default rate that ever you want in whatever currency you like, which is quite neat, depending on what work it is you're doing. So depending on your client, you can be recording the time it takes to do any kind of work that you want. You just add it to the list. You can have different clients, so you can add clients. And when you add a client, I'll call it the multifarious client, you could give it an address, um, and you could put some information in here if you wanted to, etc., etc. I won't go any further with that. And then once you've got your client, you can see that he's got, it takes the default rates to begin with, and it assumes that you want to use all of these activities. If I never did post edit for this client, I could uncheck it and never use post edit. And if I wanted to edit an activity rate, the defaults used are used to begin with. I can edit that and I can change that. So I can say, okay, multifarious, he pays really well. So we'll take an extra five. So you can see the adjustment to the defaults. So it's pretty straightforward to edit the rates for a particular client. Like that. So you can see at a glance what you're actually doing. So for Cheapskate you only do translation and post edit work and he pays five below the, the your, your default rate. So you can see at a glance what these particular customers are, are like for you. You can add your own details in here which will be useful in future reports that he's going to do and there's a backup taken of every report as you work. I need to be quick because I only wanted to make these short videos and there's a lot in this particular application so I'm going to show you how it works. So I've got this tracking now if I go to a project, so say for example I go to this one, which is an existing pro a project I'm doing for an existing client. So I'll double click this and I'll open this one for sign off because I've already done a bit of translation review on it. So I'll open it for sign off for example. And when I do this, the file opens up in Studio and what I see is the ticker, the timer has already started already. The type is already sign off because it recognized that this was a sign off project because of what I've signed on here. Oh, sorry, depended on how I opened it. So if I opened it for translation, it would be a translation project. If I open it for review, it would be a review project. And if I opened it for um, um, sign off, it would be a sign off project. These are the three that it recognizes. Now, as soon as I close the file and stop work, it will then bring up a box to tell me what I want to do with this. And if the activity wasn't something that I didn't actually do for that particular client, so in this case, I opened it for sign-off, but actually my client was Cheapskate, and if you remember when I looked in the client settings, I only had translation and post-edit activated. I can change it at this point to activate it, to activate what I really want, which is post-editing. And in this case, it then activates this, uses the correct rate. I can change it here if I decide that he's all of a sudden being a bit more generous. I can change it if I want to, um, and then I click on OK file closes and this adds it to my um, my collection of activities for Cheapskate. So if I click on Cheapskate, um, I can click on the individual file and now you can see that I've got my um, 
last file that I worked on was cheapskate that I just did, wasn't it? Why isn't it refreshed? Okay. If it doesn't refresh and you don't see it straight away, click on the little search button and that seems to refresh it. I'm sure that's a minor bug that the developer will sort out. But you can see now I have the post edit there. And if I wanted to create an invoice or if I wanted to build a report for that, I can pick the individual things that I wanted just using the control and then selecting the files. Export activities to um, my Excel format. So I could say uh, this, this is another cheapskate, so I'll go for cheapskate. I can replace it. Say OK. And this opens up the file in Excel with a pretty basic report, but you can change that to do whatever you want with that report at this point. You can see it now gives you a list of all the things I just selected and summarizes them at the bottom. So depending on how much weight, how much time you spent on it, there's the invoice. So quite neat. I believe the developer is going to add more capabilities to this. So this is great at the moment and he's going to add more work in there. There's a lot more functionality around this application. Um, if, for example, I wanted to open a new document or a new project, I could do that. So if I clicked on my welcome screen and said translate single document, and I just picked up a, um, a file I'm working on. Let's just say one at the top. Let's just pick up that Excel file, for example. I don't know what's in it, but we'll just open that quickly with any file. Just so you can see what happens here again. The activity tracker is there. And it should kick in and start tracking as soon as the file opens up for translation. There we go. The tracker's going. And so now I'm ready to be able to start translating in this one. Because this didn't have a client, if I close that, you can see it has no client. So if I just click on OK there, allow the file to close. And when I go back to the time tracker, I've now got a no client tracker up here and you can see the file that's been recorded in there with no client against it. So if I then wanted to add that, add a client to that, I could double click it and this now allows me to add my client. So I can say, okay, that one was actually for multifarious. Click on OK and it now moves it into the multifarious bracket. So you can keep a record of all your clients there. Very nice little application for recording the amount of time you spend on different activities as you are working. So I hope you find that useful. And if you like that application, I'd recommend you go to the Open Exchange, download the application, um, install it, and have a play. Thank you.